I've released 4 games on Steam and made over $30,000 selling my own indie games. Here's how you can start your own game dev journey today. If I had to start all over again with no experience and become a full-time game developer, here's the step-by-step -step guide to how I would do it. If you want to get a job in game development or you want to go solo, you have to start by creating your first game. For most people, I recommend starting with arcade games. These are pretty simple games, but they can also be a lot of fun. Almost anyone can create a game like Pong, but you can still get a lot of enjoyment out of it. If you're still not sure exactly how to start, I recommend that you download Game Maker since it's very beginner friendly, and it's still what I use to release my commercial games. If you're brand new to coding, you can start by using the visual drag and drop tools. These are like training wheels that you can take off later, but for now, they'll teach you the fundamentals of coding so you can actually get started and create something. It's a great exercise because it'll teach you that even completing a small game can be a lot of work. All the basic features like art, music, sound, graphics, and mechanics, it might not be hard to add them individually but putting them all together to make something fun can be quite difficult so when you get stuck you should start using some online resources personally i am entirely self-taught in game development everything i learned was online for free i would watch a ton of youtube tutorials i would read the user guides for my game engine and i would follow along with other developers in their journey also don't be afraid to use assets created by others i know that a lot of these assets are paid but you'll be supporting other artists and developers in the game development community while also saving time. If you don't want to use itch.io or the Unity Asset Store, Kenny has a bunch of free assets that I definitely recommend you check out. Now on the next step on your game dev journey. Congratulations, you just made a game and you're officially a game developer. Now that you understand the basics of game development and you finished your own game, I recommend participating in a game jam. At this point, you can start focusing on whatever skill set you enjoy the most or you feel you're the most skilled at. The main game dev skills are game design and project management, art and animation, programming and systems design, and finally, music and sounds. This is the perfect time to start working with a team, so you can delegate the skills that you're not as strong with to other people. You don't even need to get too attached to these labels. Focusing on whatever will help get the game complete is the best thing you can do for your team. The game does not have to be unique or original in any way. As long as you get a game done, that is an accomplishment you should be proud of. All you need to do is make something related to the theme and focus on finishing it in the allotted time best you can. I recommend you use itch.io to find your game jams and then once you've finished your game you can easily post them on there. If you're participating in a big game jam you'll probably get a lot of feedback from others which is super valuable for a game developer. Great work you just finished your first game jam. Once you feel like you have enough skills to complete a game you can move on to the next stage of game development which is starting a full game release and start getting serious about game development. The easiest path for most developers to releasing their first game is on Steam which is more popular than ever and pretty friendly for first time developers. Now, I would recommend before you start working on your project to do a ton of market research and then do a ton of prototyping before you even start trying to finish your game. I was able to sell more than 2,000 copies of my first game, but I think that's only possible because I looked at a lot of other games that were releasing around that time, so I knew the type of games the players wanted and what they would expect when they buy new games on Steam. Even if you made other games before, it's always best to try to keep your scope as small as possible so you can actually finish your game without taking on too much risk. Now I'm a huge indie game nerd who loves discovering new games and what sort of mechanics or ideas that they offer that no other game has. The truth is a lot of the mechanics that you've seen in games have actually been used plenty of times before. It's usually the way that they combine those that create a super unique game and experience. So here are some core genres that I recommend you look into if you're creating your first game. If you want to focus on design and programming rather than art, then an idler or a management game is great for that. You can just focus on the mechanics and you don't need to have a ton of art and animations in the game. Now if you love deep strategy games, you can build an auto battler or a roguelike. If you create your systems right, you can create a ton of emergent gameplay with only a few systems. Now if you love tabletop gaming and board games, you can build a card or a dice game. There are a ton of people that love board games but sometimes they want to get that type of experience on their computer. Now if you're interested in 3D games and 3D modeling, I'd recommend you make a short and sweet horror game with a really scary
Furry Monster. If you enjoy chill and cozy games and want to focus more on the art, music, and general vibes, I would recommend you make a room customization game or a chill building game. Finally, if story and writing is the most important thing to you, I recommend a visual novel. Here's the thing, even though these are good starting points for you, all of these games are still going to be pretty hard to make and it's still going to be hard to find an audience, but I think you have a better chance with these types of games. This is the hardest part of game development, creating a commercial game from start to finish. If you want to get it done eventually, you should have a very specific deadline for when you want to complete the game and then schedule out each part so you have an idea of where you should be, whether you're falling behind or ahead of your schedule. If you're anything like me, you'll probably be behind most of the time, but that's okay, it's completely normal and you just have to keep moving forward the best you can. I also find that it's great to have an early prototype, a demo, and a really good beta test for the game. That way you can get a lot of feedback all throughout your development cycle. I don't think it's true that any game is truly made solo. There's always other people that help in one way or another. So there's no shame in getting help for others. Just make sure that you're paying them fairly for their work. Credit people and make sure you have a commercial license for anything that you use in your game. Congratulations, you just released your first commercial game. This is an accomplishment that not a lot of developers have done, so you should be very proud of yourself. Next, I would focus on building a community around your games and playtesting them as much as possible, so you can hone your game development skills even further. You can also start looking at ways to fund your next project, like using a Kickstarter, grants, or publishers. Improving your game design and development skills takes years, and so I think it's best to focus on making similar games to things that you did in the past so you can improve them even further. Now, I think the final stage is one that I haven't even hit yet, which is creating a massive hit game. If you want to get insights from successful game developers, I recommend that you watch GDC Game Developer Conference Talks, which you can watch for free on YouTube. In the book Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell follows the lives of a ton of successful people. He shows that there's research demonstrating that it takes around 10,000 hours for someone to master a given skill. But he also found that most successful software developers like Bill Gates were born around the same time and had access to computers that most people did not have. To me, this demonstrates that success happens when skilled people get the perfect opportunity to show off their skill and benefit from them. So there are no guarantees and it's best to work on improving your game dev skills while creating games that make the best use of them, while also promoting your games and positioning them to succeed. And success is not everything. If you're like me and you just enjoy creating games, then this is the right journey for you to take. Now go make games.